Hey guys, good evening. Good to see you. Welcome back and good to happy Thursday. Good to have everyone here. Sorry for running a few minutes late, but um, we were just finalizing a couple things with the folks. Um, my family is still kind of in town and they're about to leave pretty soon. So we are uh, closing out the week. They're leaving. We're finishing classes pretty soon. We're just kind of getting ready for summer. So it's going to be an interesting um, an interesting uh, end of the spring moving into the into summertime. So um, it's good to have you. Good to see you guys. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your designs this evening. And so um, we're going to definitely jump in on it because I want to make sure we use our time tonight to see your designs, answer any questions that you might have, give you some feedback, and hopefully uh, have a little bit of time also to make those adjustments and changes, things of that sort. If we still need to make a, a, a few adjustments on the due dates, then um, I'm willing to make that change. So um, don't worry about due dates. We can be flexible on them. So I have a feeling, depending on how far we get tonight, we might have to push the due date for next Tuesday, um, while at the same time, simultaneously uh, launching the logo, uh, the, final, uh, the logo project, which is kind of like our last big project, which will be like a hyper lesson. Um, and then we do our portfolios, which is not complicated at all. It's, um, it's a Google slide, and we're gonna punch in your designs throughout the semester into the Google slide. And it's going to be great. So um, normally the final is ultra easy um, because it's just a, it's a final portfolio where you take the entire semester and put it into a one digital file. Um, and then you keep that for yourself, of course, share it with me. And then I download that for, for future records in the department. Um, so really, we're doing all the heavy lifting throughout the semester with your projects. And, um, and the portfolio is really going to be one of the, the last things that's not going to fe feel like a heavy lift, if that makes sense. So um it'll be that's kind of like where our schedule is looking like and that's how we're going to go um within both digital illustration and for packaging design as well because we're building um a case study it's like a portfolio but it's it's no more as a case study okay so um that being said um we got about 10 minutes till the seven o'clock hour um jesus i know you said you wanted to go first but maybe we could fit in a packaging design updates um just to share with the class and then We'll give it 10 minutes and then we'll move into um, into the into the uh, breakout rooms and have everyone kind of move forward from there. So um, let me kind of ask packaging design. Does anyone in packaging design have an update they would like to share with the class? And um, and we'll, it'll be roughly like 10 minutes uh, or less worth of sharing your updates. If you can, you can type it in and uh, then go from there. Amy, great, awesome. All right, well, thanks, Amy, appreciate it. Um, let me go ahead and then stop my sharing and we'll take a look at your, uh, your perfume brand and we'll see where you are with it, give you some feedback and then we'll open up those breakout rooms. Okay. So let me go ahead and get that ready, the, my breakout room list. And then, um, when you're ready, uh, Amy, you can share the screen. I'm going to set up multiple participants here and you should be able to share and then I'll stop the background music there so that we can get you set up so i think yeah. actually somebody wanted to go jesus wanted to go he said i can go first those um well jesus has the, the poster but i wanted to see if we could fit in jesus if that's okay with you i wanted to fit in at least one packaging design um between now and seven if that's okay with you um and and i think he said i think he said okay roger roger that okay thanks oh, okay. jesus appreciate it. it awesome Okay, so then Amy, really quick, um, just as a quick reminder, we're working on your on a completely new perfume brand, right? Um, yeah. And where did we leave off last time? Just like really quick summary of where you were uh, last time and, and what we have today. Um, to be honest, I lost the file. I don't know what happened to it. I mean, I wasn't really happy with it either way, so it kind of gave me like a restart. Okay. And I was up last night working on it and I think I got kind of far in my direction. I took a new direction again. I'm not sure like. Well, it, then we'll take a look at it right now. But what what happened to your file? You, you, the file got lost on your computer? Right. So 
I'm not sure if like I forgot to save it or I just I don't know it just disappeared into thin air. If you went into Illustrator and in Illustrator you did uh, file open recent files it, it doesn't show up under the open recent files uh, folder there? No it doesn't I mean it's because I'm using like a friend's account for the Adobe Cloud and I'm not really sure how to work it. So it might be there somewhere underneath everything. I just have to look for it. Okay, because um, yeah. because if the file's floating there, so then are you in your friend's account right now by any chance? I think so. So because um, because the reason is that if let me go to Adobe Illustrator really quick, is that um, you might have it might be in the cloud document under the account of the friend if you if you're sharing an account cloud. right okay so it could be there um but if it's your account then that's that's the only option i could think of because if it's in your computer then you can go to um file open recent files and um and if you went to file uh, let me see if i can go there if you went to file open recent files then you'll see like a list of all the files within that account um that you're using on that computer open. so open recent files is basically everything that's local and cloud-based that would open up in that account so um so it wouldn't be open it would be open recent files and if you notice, there's a lot of files that get stored in the program that like go weeks out. So it could potentially be within that list. Um, and then I'm not sure how your naming system is. If you if you name it like perfume or packaging design or um, how those names are set up. But if you remember the name of the file and um, you're using a Mac, or is it a Mac or a PC? A Mac. Okay, then you could technically, if you know the name of the file, go up to your um, spotlight search and type the name of the file there or a fraction of it. And it'll basically give you like a breakdown of where it could potentially be, right? So if you type in a word, then the Mac will show up everything in that computer that's under that, uh, that has that word built into it, whether it's in the file or it's, at, or it's the file name itself. Okay. So those are three different ways to potentially find it because I would hate for you to like completely start over if we didn't have a sort of a cute like a like a full search, I guess you can say. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for it like in the spotlight search and I don't see it coming up. Okay, because um, because if it's not in the computer, then that would lead me to believe it might be in the cloud document of that account that you're sharing. Okay. And, and if it is in that cloud document, then if you click cloud documents, then it'll show you everything that's being shared in the cloud, right? And these files are from my iPad. So these are the Adobe Illustrator through iPad, which automatically connects to the cloud. And so it's showing me everything that I did on iPad. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, when you get a chance, hopefully tonight, then that would be helpful. Maybe we can retrieve it, um, but who knows? Yeah. Um, we'll take a look at what you got right now and then we'll kind of see where we can go with it. Um, I'll assume that the file is gone um, and then see if that can help. Uh, and then we'll, I'll give you some feedback based off of that, okay? Um, and then Kalina, uh, it could be in another folder. That That is another option. If it's within the recents, then it could be there too. Yeah, I need to check all of my folders just to make sure. Yeah, the, um, um, I would say definitely um, after this is, I don't know how organized your desktop format is um, or how organized the computer is. Typically for most college students, it, there's really no like file management system set up or really like taught to them. So um, we can talk a little bit more about the file management system and like what could be some ways that you can kind of break it down. Um, normally, I just like to set things up according to like the class and yeah. then I put all my files in that class in that folder so that if something gets lost, I at least know what the name of the folder is and I can find it through the folder name. 
Um, right. And then each each file is super specific for me. So if it's perfume, I'm going to call it perfume, you know, one or uh, or perfume two, three, four, five, whatever the file name might be. So I kind of name it what it is, so I don't lose it. If it's if it's untitled, that's it's kind of you. I mean, you could type in untitled to see if you if the if there's any files that are called untitled. And um, because most of the time, Illustrator will create um, new files and it'll call it untitled-1, untitled-2, untitled-3, and it'll kind of like go through that list, kind of like what I have here um, within some of these programs. So you might even want to search under untitled and see if anything pops up under untitled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and your file might be sitting in there too. Okay. So a couple of options and totally hope you find it. So yeah, um, trust. Okay. Yeah. So that being said, let's let's take a look at what you got, and um, and see what your thoughts are. You say you kind of did a completely new brand. It sounds like new name system and everything of that sort. Oh uh, well, it's still the same name, but it's just different um, style ideas. Okay. Let's take a peek at it, and then we'll um, we'll talk about it. <sighs> so nervous. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping that your old file shows up because at this point it's just getting the bottle um, set up for you. Can you see my screen? Um, not yet. Um, actually, excuse me. I'm sorry. Let me share. There he goes. Okay, you've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's let's start off with the favorite. Um, and um, and maybe if the class can let us know um, which one you like, upper left, um, upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. Um, if you guys can do a, uh, a chime in on for Amy, that would be great just to give her as much feedback as possible in case her file is, is lost. Um, the, the more feedback, the better, I think would totally help out for her. So if you get a chance, we'll, we'll take a look at it. Um, but we'll identify it as upper left, lower left, upper right, lower right. I'm trying um, to remember them, but never mind. <laughs> or you can call it the name of the colors too. Um, we'll see how that goes. Okay. So Miss Amy, um, uh, Let's go with your favorite. Do you have a favorite out of these four? Um, let's see. Well, I didn't really get to the orange ones because I didn't get mm -hmm. to trace the orange to place the images on top yet. But mm -hmm. I'd say these are the most polished as of now. Um, I really like, let's see. I really like these two here. I'm not sure if you can see like yeah, I like those. Um, this one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that one too. Okay, and and those are there. Okay, so it's really so these are two. So it's more than four. It's actually like uh, you have double that. Is what it sounds like. Oh well, these are just um, ideas that I have. This is just the same like concept. So this would be rose and sandalwood. These are just different looks for that. Um, specific scent mm -hmm. and then this would be sage and or orange blossom oh i see i see okay just ideas within like a specific fragrance okay and so out of those you're saying like those um, more open open label ones are the ones that you like for the most part am i hearing you right there so yeah. if i had to annotate um like these are kind of moving towards your favorite. Is that sounding correct? Correct. Okay. And okay. And then from there. Okay. So from these, those are the favorites. Okay. So the ones that are kind of like just catching my eye. Um, well, at least the ones that are looking fairly complete. Um, the ones that kind of look complete to me yeah, are like these, this, and maybe this one, but that this one needs a little bit more work, that last lower right one of the of the square. Um, that kind of need it. And I'm trying to figure out also if if it's a clear bottle and is this white part supposed to be like a clear crystal? And then yeah, underneath exactly. it is kind of like a painted on crystal. Like it's it's sort of like a screen printed onto the glass as it were, something of that sort. Well, I know for this one, I wanted it to, oh, I wanted yeah, the bottle okay. to be yeah. just like clear glass and then mm -hmm. maybe like a strip, like a label 
like a green mm. on it. Okay. Like I a like or some such. I'm digging that. I do like how that's looking, um, mainly because it's looking fairly complete and it's looking somewhat symmetrical. So there is like an orientation. Um, and I do agree with Katya saying like the rose coming out um, here is looking quite nice. So I do like the fact that it's kind of coming downwards and it's sort yeah. of cropped and um, sort of leading down. It's, uh, it's appealing, it's interesting. I like, I just like the fact that you're cropping things um, just to kind of engage the viewer. So I do like that. Um, and I do feel like this one is looking complete because you have your logo, you have, you have the name of the product, you have the scent, which is a contrasting font. Um, the, well, the sort of subtitle, which is a little bit more precise. So it looks like it's ambience. And am I reading three different scents mixed in here? Are, is, are these the, um, is this like the formula of the different uh, scents mixed into one essentially? Yeah, so all of them will have like the base of jasmine flower since it's like long lasting. Ah, okay. So, so that's the core, that's right. That's the accord, as you said, the, the main accord. And then we have sort of the sub, uh, it's like sort of like post accords or secondary sense or secondary yeah, like, accords. Like middle notes and base notes. notes that come afterwards. Okay, so then, so then what I like about that is that the hierarchy is sort of indicating that, right? So the biggest thing that we see here is the name of the product. Second biggest thing is the scent, which is yeah. the chord, accord, the main scent or the base accord scent. And then you have your nodes, which are smaller, which are like nodes, sub nodes related to it. Yeah. So, sure. so the so I like how the font size is an indication of the scent levels, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. uh, or the scent intensities. Um, and so that being said, I do kind of feel like we could potentially move the rose and sandal up a little bit um, to kind of close the gap. Um, so I think in this one, it's more of a, it's more like moving, um, and spacing things out so that's a little bit closer to each other. So setting up a, a particular order, I think will help. Yeah. The other thing about typography is the alignment, which is all about something lining up with something else. So oftentimes I'm always looking like the end of the J and Jasmine is lining up to the R of Rose. And does the end of E of Jasmine potentially line up to the, where the end of the D of Sandalwood is, right? Yeah. And then I, I'm even thinking, could we perhaps even align the end of the A of Ambience with that sort of imaginary line so that we're creating this sort of structure, right? Um, imaginary structure. And then your logo is centered to the flower and the bottle, which means your ounces are centered as well. So at the end of the day, what we're doing is kind of creating these, this sort of invisible structure of alignments with the type to give it a sense of order. Um, and I would make those adjustments, right? Ambience can be, um, you know, scaled maybe a little bit or, or um, so that the end of the A lines up with that red arrow, end of the E, if you, may, if you're see, if you kind of feel what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I think we could find a bottle from a website that I pulled up called Yellow Images because, or you can, um, or we can model it on Adobe Dimension. And um, because Adobe Dimension has some interesting um, um, sort of crystal shapes or shapes that we can kind of convert into a bottle if, we, if uh, time permits. And I was even looking at yellow images the other day and I thought about, you know, I was like, oh, this would work great for Amy's project. Cool. And um, that would be, let me see if I can um, share my screen um, for a second. We'll come, let me see if I can share mine, but I will, we'll have you share your screen in just a couple of seconds, okay? okay. Again, so stand by. And the yellow images, even though it's a paid site, I think we could kind of hack the picture and we could technically um, pull from like a whole different like list of different perfume bottles here. So 
we could still take this file, whichever the shape of the bottle is, right? Um, that's similar to it, or maybe even one that's a little bit more, um, more aligned to the brand. And then basically we could Photoshop it or download it as a Photoshop mock-up, or we could screenshot it and do some Photoshop, Photoshop magic to it, or download it as a JPEG and Photoshop magic it. But imagine putting your label over those bottles, right? Um, and getting it to close to as possible. I think it would look pretty awesome. Um, so don't worry about the glass bottle part. Um, I, I, we, we'll focus on the label and the graphics. And I think you're moving in a really good direction with this particular concept. Okay. okay. So the mock-up part, I'm not worried about. It's the more the typography that I want to, I want to get down, um, which is, which is exactly what you're concentrating on as you should. Okay. Um, can we see your file one more time? Um, so we can get a little bit of a picture for it. Yeah. So um, I am agreeing with that one. That's feeling pretty good to me. Can we also zoom in really quick? Um, I know I'm going a little bit over time, but sure. I want to make sure. Um, can we take a look at the, let me see, uh, like this one over here for a second so we can get a little picture of that? Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, that one's interesting too. I mean, I think, I think that one's moving in an interesting direction as well. And I just like the cropping in that too. So I would say when it when when you when we select the final one, which I think would be that red one with sort of the gradation on it, these other ones throw in throw in as well for your case study, um, because I mean I like it, um, but at the same time it kind of feels very sort of like Victoria's Secret plastic bottle, right? In a sense, you know what I mean. It's not so, what I want. <laughs> yeah, and so. But the, don't get me wrong, like it's good, right? I mean, it's it's I'm identifying it as that. But if let's say the budget was limited and, and I can only do a label, like a printed label, then that works. That's actually pretty good. Okay. So um, this would make a lot of sense and throw that in there in your presentations as your exploration kind of works. So um, I like where that's going. Yeah, I think the only thing I would say about this one is I like the asymmetrical kind of feel to it. And I would probably move Rose Sandalwood literally like three arrow clicks, three nudges or four nudges higher <laughs> so that it's moving a little bit closer to the S there and just kind of closing um, closing a little bit of the negative space that's happening in here, if that makes sense. Got it. So I would close that just a little bit more so it, comes in, it feels a little bit uh, closer to it. Um, and if I'm being nitpicky, that's a good thing. Uh, that means it's looking pretty strong overall. And then um, keeping to like, just thinking about alignments, um, you're already kind of moving in that direction. I'm starting to see that you're kind of subconsciously thinking about things lining up. And I would center align um, the logo, the word ambience with the 24 and 50 ml ounces there. Okay. So, so that they're aligned to the center. So okay. that way you're getting a little bit of structure. Um, logo. We, I don't mind that so much. It kind of reminds me of, um, it kind of reminds me a little bit of something that I built in the past. So I'm okay with it, but the next unit is, well, digital illustration has logos. So um, for that one, I'm okay with it. I would probably say if time still permits, we could sort of play with it. Um, maybe the crossbar has to kind of go away in the A. So making that possibly disappear, but then it might look like an MV. It kind, of sort of, it kind of looks like three A's. On the, it could. You could, is that the, was that the intent? Do you see that? This just like too, comp I feel like this, the serif just makes it so complicated, but. It I can. It was, yeah, I thought it was cool because it had a, a nice contrast between like the cursive type. And is that in reference to ambience or slash your name um, or both or AM? <laughs> Um, it's towards ambience. I can see why it's, it can resemble my name. I actually noticed that like towards the end, but I also mm -hmm. wanted to put it like on the top here. Can you see where I'm? Yeah. Playing? Oh yeah. It, um, it with the circle, like on top of the, you, oh yeah. I totally see what you're saying. Um, yeah, that's a possibility. I am. Um, if, um, I would definitely look into that with like a Photoshop render to see if that could do it. I feel like that could, it could be, depends on the bottle shape that you pick. Right. Yeah. And, and if you decide to add like a feature onto that where it's sort of like an imprint, 
I think like a foil or like a light stamp, sort of like a metallic stamp a little bit. Um, lighter shade of metallic could help, almost like it was laser engraved, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, could be an option, but we'll save that towards the end just until we get like the actual bottle photoshopped over and like the actual effect that we want to get towards it. Okay. Um, but overall, I think you hustled really well and you got something that's pretty strong and I hope we could find that other file while we're at it. Yeah. So um, the lower left too is pretty strong, but I know it's just a slight variation. Yeah, um, same commentary. I've, yeah, I would say those two left ones there do kind of feel like, yeah, a little like plastic bottle label-ish. But the one I think that will definitely, I think uh, get rendered really well um, will probably be this one. Um, just because of the gradation on it and it, and I can see it sort of like printed onto the glass as it were so okay I have a question yes mm -hmm. so I want to ask if like the arrangements make any sense like the ingredients so rose and sandalwood um, I wanted that to have like a like a earthy scent and then this one would be sage and orange blossom orange blossom that would be like more citrusy and then the last one i didn't get to it but it was lavender and vanilla and that one was going to be the sweet scent so they're all going to be like distinctive in their scent well i know i definitely know lavender so i know lavender is like a popular scent um i think i've seen a lavender a vanilla combo so i think that makes sense um uh to me and i do think that the sage and the orange blossoms do also make sense as well uh, natural, citrus, rose, earthy, lavender, sweet, like, yeah. And then, um, and then um, Ellie also is picking up um, as well too and affirms that too. So mm -hmm. they don't feel or sound odd to me at all. Um, they yeah. actually do sound kind of high end, if that makes sense. Um, and I think once we find that right bottle, um, it'll kind of communicate really well as, as sort of a high-end product. Um, and, um, but I think it's working really good in terms of just scent and the accents and the nodes. And I even like the layout of um, your pages too, how you're kind of putting in the image, the graphic, and then putting in like the, the type on the left sort of turn sideways. All these are good for your final case study that we can put onto the, onto the deck that's available to you right now. Yeah, cool, thank you. Okay, yeah, a good hustle. So um, yeah, let's work with that, get that going. And then once we're set, hopefully we find the other files and we'll throw that into your case study as well. Okay. Thank you. All right, good job. All right, guys. So um, let's do this. Thank you, Amy. Thank you guys for um, t throwing in your votes. Um, really proud with everything that packaging is working on. And so I am, you guys are always taking some huge jumps and it's really inspiring to our um, digital illustration class, okay? So that being said, let's go ahead and open up the breakout rooms and um, we'll meet the packaging designers in just a few. Uh, digital illustrators, we're gonna be working on looking at your poster designs, sketches, digitals, all that good stuff this hour. And we'll uh, take a break at eight o'clock and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of comments um, Based off the comments, we can start building our digitals from there, okay? All right, let me go ahead and start moving. Amy, I'll move you over into packaging really quick. And um, we'll have packaging design uh, join packaging room and we'll see you guys in just a few minutes there uh, shortly, okay? While they're um, connecting over um, with our digital illustration class, um, really quick, do we have, how many of you guys have some digitals? I know Jesus, you said you got some digitals that you're ready to show tonight. But how many of you guys have some digitals, at least one or more, one is fine, that you're ready to kind of share with the class and showcase? If I can get a little thumbs up emoji, that'll be great. Um, so that we can get a little bit of a visual and see where everybody is at. Okay, great. So very cool. So Jordan, Evelyn, Francesca, Jesus, great. Um, and then Ellie, I know I sent you some commentary. So uh, hope, so if you wanna work on those uh, adjustments, great. You can watch us obviously and see what everyone else is doing. Take some of that inspiration, work on your design as well. Okay, and, um, and then Yanis, uh, uh, we know 
Um, hopefully you have some sketches available. So we'll take a look or if there's um, any questions you might have, the, this, the presentation tonight will give you a little bit of a visual too, okay? And um, Nidhi, Yvonne, hopefully there's something available, whether it's a sketch, um, you could totally email me your sketches and those sketches are te can basically look as rough as what my screen is here. Um, and if you have something there that you wanna work with, um, let's take a look at the sketches. You can email me, you can put it in direct message um, and I can give you some feedback in a private room or uh, via the chat. So whichever you feel most comfortable with, okay? All right. All right, guys, let's jump in. Um, Jesus, I know, uh, thank you, Nidhi, appreciate it. Um, Jesus, we'll start off with you because I know you said that you like the you like the rim concept, but you wanted to go back and kind of work on the cap. So if you're ready you can, and, if, and if you have a moment, you can share your screen and we can talk about it. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, perfect. Um, go for it and we'll take a look at what you got. I think, um, okay, sure. I'm sure, it'll, I'm sure it'll be a good approach there. All right, can we see? Yes, sir. We have a minimalist like no other here, sir. That's great. Yes. Okay. Um, I, so, did, I didn't wanna uh, mm -hmm. get rid of the baseball cap with the Dodger blue. And uh, I did want the Rising Sun Incorporated somehow. And I know uh, with the rim, I was trying to incorporate the rim, but it 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 was and is uh, too complex. Um, not definitely not minimalist. Mm -hmm. Just in my opinion, but I did want to try it, see what what I could what it could be done with it. But I prefer this one. This one I'm sticking with. I think now um, the letters are blocky, mm -hmm. and it is. Uh, they're in that fashion because I've seen them before in that style by uh, re real gangs in LA um, or one in particular um, where I grew up. <laughs> so, the, font, the font style itself, you're saying? What was that? I'm sorry, what, that you, like the, were you referring to the, the typeface or the font or? The font, yes. Oh, the, wow. The okay. blocky, blocky letters. Cool. Okay, so that's a legit inspo, inspiration there. I love that. It's a really cool font. Um, and maybe I could zoom in a little bit more. Um, okay. I didn't know how to change the background to the to the poster, at least the color. But I was trying. I was going for a gray. But then I did kind of want the the rising sun with the with the white background too. So uh, I I drew a little light gray around the the top button of the baseball cap, as you can see. Can't mm -hmm. see it though from afar, but it's there. Okay. Um, well, first uh, um, I'm very drawn to just like the, like the, the font itself. Um, like it's just very different. It's, it's engaging. It's, it's abstract, almost like it let, almost hard to read, but at the same time, it's kind of engaging me. Um, just because it's so it's such it's such a different typeface in and of itself. So um, with a lot of contrast, here's um here's my thought on it that I that I just picked up on. It feels like, and let me see if I can um, remote control this thing. I think we did it last time. So we can take a look at it. Okay. Um, uh, this is the a PDF. Would you like to see the AI file itself? Yeah, can we take a look at the AI file for a second? Yes, sir. Okay. So, oh. Tim, so really quick, look, looks like the controls there. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, I agree. The that's actually I was thinking the same thing. The hat felt like its own poster. So, like to me, it almost seems like we could that that this could be an image in and of itself. Yes. Like as, as a, as a poster, if that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. um, that kind of stood out to me. I was like, man, this could be a poster by itself and it could be kind of modified a little bit and, um, and kind of play that role, um, with like the typeface possibly playing a role maybe in the hat. I don't know if that might be, sometimes you might see it like printing on the hat 
as well. So there could be a little bit of that going on. Um, okay. and, and for the type, I mean, it almost seems like we could, we could technically put it sort of underneath it. Oh, we could, yeah, we could, we could remove the red sun under in the Chicano, I guess, and just leave it right under it with the, with the bigger red sun with the baseball cap. Yeah, because like, to me, it almost seems like that could just be black in and of itself. Um, ah. Or even just a rectangle, to be honest, um, to kind of contrast the, the curve and the circle happening with... Uh, with the hat in the sun, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, to me, that could be that could be something there, um, as a particular um, option. So, to me, that's kind of feeling like its own poster design. And then, with regards to the hat, it almost feels like there could possibly be like one little line somewhere here that is kind of like. A, like an indicator of uh, of it could be kind of like a light sort of band, as it were. Yeah, so where the where the hat meets the brim. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be black per se. It could even be like a dark blue or something ah, okay. to that effect. You know, just to kind of show a little bit of a bridge. Um, yeah. Okay. It could it could be a a knit. It could be a stitch line. I think it just needs that little brim there to show or with a little bit of shift just to kind of show um, shadowing of some sort because you, you have it here at the bottom. Um, so it almost kind of feels like it needs some shadowing or or some level of shading happening towards the brim and the, and the top of the hat or the edge of the hat, the front of the hat meets the top of it. So- Okay, so uh, I didn't know shadowing was allowed in the minimalist. Well, you, you can if it's like one degree of it, maybe no more than two. So, mm -hmm. um, or it could be that stitch line, right? Like just a one line that's sort of like a darker shade of blue from the hat, maybe like five or ten percent darker, right? Right, right. So it okay. could even be to that level. So I think that in and of itself could, is its own design, right? Um, the other thing that kind of stood out to me is that this could, if it was just this variation then it almost seems like the it wouldn't need the hat per se um just the circle and i know it's going to be really rough so um so there might be some elements here that are kind of floating around and stuff like that it's going to be yeah. super, super rough but um and that because the font if the font is supposedly like la urban the font itself can be la urban and then the circle is represented as rep represents Japan, right? Um, yeah. Part of me even wonders if we even want to do something where you kind of create like the rays and have that kind of expand out, if that makes sense. That's right. Right? So that like the top half is, is more like this bandana, simplistic sort of float. And I'm, it's going to look really rough, by the way. So, yeah, um, so something to that effect, right? Um, that's what I'm thinking um, overall. And I know I'm like, it's probably because of this one piece over here and I'm like ripping it to shreds. So I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> right, so for me, I think something to, something to that effect would be really interesting to go across the design. Um, and that could even be interesting too, right? Because then it's kind of like we have the font. It's kind of originating from the Chicano. There's a lot of symbolism happening here, right? Um, yeah. Chicano culture original or originating, right? Japan shining out. Um, they're connecting, but the sun, but the rays represent like going outwards, right? So this culture clash is now impacting and getting attention with other cultures outside the two, right? So. There's a lot of symbolism that can go on with that. So even that could, approach could even help the design a little bit, I'm thinking. Um, and those two will kind of get it to where it needs to be, I feel. Um, you know, you could even add like the documentary line here at the bottom, you know, a doc, um, I'm gonna just draw, draw, just draw the rectangle so you can see that, but it could be like a documentary by, right? Um, yeah. 
at that font size there. And I think we'll get what we need to get with it. And then you'll have like a legit two sets of designs that are manageable there. So like the one yeah, on the okay. right, interesting, like very different, you know, um, very minimalist, this one, different approach, but they'll be unique in their own sort of ways because they have two distinct sort of uh, approaches. So, um, so yeah, I'm feel I'm definitely thinking that they're the, the, that out of all of them, probably the one on the right with the hat is definitely feeling different to me, um, just because the the rising sun and the rays kind of cliche. I mean, I'm not I'm not knocking it. It's successful, right? And that works, and that's obvious. But 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 the you know with the hat over the circle, it's just different, and you wouldn't expect that often. So that even, that could definitely work for it as well. Yeah, so, absolutely, I agree. Um, um, I'm liking the, the third one on the right hand side. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just different and the, unexpected. And you can even put like a documentary by uh, down there on the bottom and, and then you'll be ready to rock and roll there. Um, definitely an improvement from the first one, right? With the rim. Um, yeah. Right. But, but throw that, throw them all in there. Like you can throw it in, you can still upload multiple files, but um yeah, I think that third one on the right is probably the, is the one that I'm kind of that's growing on me. Um, so that's a possibility there too. Rising sun in the background could also help too. Yeah, there's a lot of there's so much you can do with it in terms of variation. It's it's intense. It's nuts. But um, but I do like the effort and I do like that you kind of went in and put some detail in the hat and um, and it shows up. And I do like how the hat is is arced and curved and it's contrasting heavily contrasting the typeface, which is super geometric. So the, the two contrasts of like geometric versus organic form, going back to those principles of design is really good. It's really strong. And the font is abstract enough that it's kind of like, wait a minute, what am I seeing here? Um, and it makes me want to kind of read it and engage a little bit closer and just be like, what, is, what does it say? And then you already got my attention because I'm trying to make sense of it and I'm getting more, to, I'm getting more to, airtime to understand it, if that makes sense. Okay. Roger. So looking good, really like it. And um, yeah, make, let's make some adjustments and then um, you can upload it. So um, um, I'll send out the logo lecture so you can take a look at it so you can start working on the logo for the next one. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Well done, man. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you for putting in that extra time. Absolutely. All right, looking good. That's a great start right there, guys. Uh, let that be some inspiration for you. Um, and, um, and let's keep it going, okay? Um, let's go with uh, Francesca. Let's see how, how yours is going. Okay. And let's see how we're feeling about it. Okay, let me just share my screen. Mm -hmm. And while Francesca's doing that, guys, like, I hope you guys realize that you, you guys have made, like, a huge jump. Like, it's hard, like, you gotta think, you gotta think back, like, we've only been doing this for, like, three months, <laughs> and, and you guys are doing posters, and it looks good, and there's symbolism now starting to show up, like, you gotta give yourselves, like, a big old, like, hand clap for that, um, and tap yourselves on the back, because um, it's great, you guys are doing so good, like, like, it's awesome, so big thumbs up to you guys, okay, um, Francesca, this is looking really good, um, can, can you break it down for us and, and tell us a little yes. bit and what, what we got? Yeah, so I started with this one on the very left. And so the tracks were really separated. The, tra the train was really set back. It wasn't um, in the, it wasn't the focal point, mm -hmm. um, which isn't what I wanted. And then I kind of progressed. I changed the font, put the tracks closer. And then I kind of ended up making the train the forefront of the poster. And then I changed the font, which I like it much more than this one over here. Um, and then I just added more details and I cleaned it up. Yeah, more. it's. And how do you feel about this uh, third version? I'm a lot happier with it than mm -hmm. I am the other ones. Yeah, um, I totally agree. I think um, that third one is a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. And now you're kind of. Um, you're moving into um, what looks like color combos, right? Right. And so um, typically I like to design in, in black, white, and grays um, whenever I'm, I'm working on a layout. And then, I, and, and then I always come back to color 
um, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I think hyper lesson four, we looked at color theory a little bit. And, but really at the end of the day, um, it's really the color guide that is the tool of choice for that hyper lesson. Hyper, hyper lesson four is long because we're going into like color theory. The last 10, 15 minutes is really showing you the color guide. So um, let me see if I can also remote control you here for a second so I can kind of give you a little bit of a sense. Um, what you could do is you can pull some colors from the movie, like screenshot colors and sort of um, find color combinations to, that are from the film to bring into the poster. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's kind of like stealing, not stealing color, but you're pulling color combinations from the film to kind of connect it back to the film. Because right. at the end, it's still a movie poster that's advertising the film, right? Um, so there's that way of doing it. And I think there's a, and there's a lot of color in that film because there's the subway map and then there's like the, you know, the, the blues, the, the reds and, and all these colors that are in that map typically. Mm -hmm. um, but then it takes place at night. So there's like these sort of like subdued sort of colors happening there. So it's kind of like, like two different sets of color guides. But if you wanted to just kind of see what works with like a blue base, um, I believe uh, that base layer might be locked. So, oh, I don't think it's allowing me to control it. Um, yeah, I might have to change some settings on my computer. Oh, no worries. Um, let, let me annotate uh, better yet. So, um, what I believe it's going to be color guide. So, it should be this one here um, or this one here. I forget. Um, I'm already I'm drawing a blank. I think it's the, the bottom one. Yeah, it's the bottom one there is the color guide. Yes. yes. Um, so, oh, let me come back to my Zoom because it. I know it's blocking it, isn't it? Oh, back to meeting, back to meeting. Okay, um, so when you pick that color guide, then what happens is, is that if you were to click like the blue um, and then hit color guide, mm -hmm. then it'll tell you, hey, we have like these um, range of colors that are available to you and you can sub and you can even select the colors that go with it. As a matter of fact, let me go into my design and then pull it up. Oh, good, good, good. Thank you. So um, see if you can click it, on to. It looks like it's this last one, this blue, I think. Right. Now, in color theory, um, we didn't go too deep into it, but this sub menu here has like different arrangements of colors. So you could do the sort of. Um, compound colors, which are kind of like related colors, you could do high contrast. It really depends how loud you want your design to be or how right. subtle you want the colors to be. So if it looks like you're going with like more pastel like colors and more subdued colors. So you could yeah. do the compound colors to kind of help arrange it. And it gives you already like a selection of colors here to choose from. And that's great. Like you could totally um, um, pick uh, up here the different colors that you can choose from. And that's really, really helpful. And it's all based off of um, that one color that you clicked on, which shows up on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, whatever the whatever it is, um, let's say you want to pick a color for the train, then you'll obviously will select the train and then select the color um, within that compound two arrangement, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. Um, and, and it'll kind of narrow it down to a, a certain range. So you're so now you're moving from like you know gray blue background to now like what looks like a full arrangement of color and it could be gray still who knows it might still stay gray or it might be a slightly purplish gray who knows mm -hmm. um it all depends on the color combination that you feel um is balanced but also connects to the film because we're still trying we also want to make sure that color also connects to the film which is like love and um and like do we want like a the sense of peace when you meet somebody do you want um, brighter colors to represent the sense of excitement when you meet someone? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really depends on like how much of an emotion, what is the emotion and how much you want the, uh, the viewer to experience that emotion with those color combinations, if that makes sense. Yeah, that um, makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Cause in the West, uh, we have our meanings of color as, as, as we saw in that presentation uh, for Hyper Lesson 4. So, um, so let's play with some color combos. Once you're set, you're ready to turn this thing in. So um, you're ready to rock and roll. I think it's looking really good. Can I take a look at the design one last time? Sure. I think 
I'm a little undecided on the back on the shadow in the back of 97 for some reason. This one? Yeah. Um, you know what? I think once you get your color combo down, whatever that gray is, it'll probably switch to like maybe a darker red um, um, to kind of go with it. Um, the rule is, is that when light bounces off a colored surface, um, it's normally a darker shade of that color of the surface, if that makes sense, right? Okay. Cause it's bouncing light, it's off the, the surface. So if you have red and red is a shadow and the, and the, and the, let's say there's a light source sitting where you are and you're shining light on the 97 from where you're sitting, right? Mm -hmm. Then that shadow technically is like a darker red, if that makes sense. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Right. So um, as you do more color theory, you're going to realize that black is not really black um, as opposed to, um, as opposed to it being more like a, an intensity of a shade of a color. Um, okay. People think shadows is, is grays and blacks and it can be, but I would say your work's gonna look a lot better when you make um, your shadows darker than the color of the thing the light's bouncing off of. Right. So if there's shadow off red, it's darker red. If it's a shadow off blue, it's gonna be a darker blue. And you're gonna see that your design's gonna look more realistic because that's actually what happens when light bounces off a color. Okay. Uh, surface or material generally okay um it i think it's looking pretty good yeah i'm digging it um yeah let's play with those color combinations and i think after that you're ready to rock so okay, perfect you know you. yeah well done i'm digging it you guys are doing so well look at that I'm proud of you guys okay um now again, Jesus and Francesca are uh, these are their round twos. So and and so was uh, yeah, Jesus and Francesca were these are round two designs based on initial comments. So so Jordan Evelyn don't you know this is Jordan this is your first one. So we'll probably going to make an adjustment with the, for after this to the second one. Um, and then Evelyn, I think this is your second one. So we'll see that update. So Jordan, we'll, let's take a look at yours really quick if you have a second. Uh, all right. And let's see what we got. Let me uh. See how the dudes. I haven't done this in a while. I got oh, yeah. share. Oh, share screen. It's right in front of me. Oh. How okay, about that it. technology? Oh yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I had jazz vibes. You know, I I I, I kind of I completely forgot how, the music that was in the in the video um, in the in the movie. In the You're film. right. Is uh, but, I forgot. It is 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 it all jazz? I, I don't I don't know, but it gave me jazz vibes, and I just been in a jazz bag for cool. for a while, so I was really feeling that. So that's why I went with the, like the dark, the dark blue, uh, you mm -hmm. know, tone. Um, that like, there's like a structure, like a dome or something. I remember in that opening opening shot, it kind of stuck out with me. You know, it almost. It kind of reminded me of the New Orleans uh, Mercedes, what Superdome or whatever. So I just traced that real quick, and then uh, traced a, a train, put it on the track. Okay, I like that. Um, the renders yeah. are cool, and I like the this up close shot. So, and it looks like you had an evolution of different ideas from that one concept, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, yeah, it's about love and stuff but you know it those have some hearts make the hearts kind of seem like they're the stars mm -hmm. at night um and then uh I, I was just like okay cell phone <laughs> i looked at my um you know battery bar on my phone and so i made one a shape builder you know well i didn't even connect these yet well i don't need to but I grouped them. And uh, I was just like, let me go with a, a sans serif this time as well, just cause it's more digital. And so it kind of matches, it kind of fits with that. And then I was like, hey, I think we can take up more space with this, uh, with all this and um, minimize it even more. And, and I think these two right here speak to me the most. Um, yeah, but. I'm, um, I think it's a good, I think it's a good evolution that you got there. And 
I, the two on the right were kind of uh, speaking to me. So for sure, like the typeface is great. And it's definitely echoing the art style of the battery, which is looking really good. And um, out of those two out of the right, um, which one is the one that kind of standing out a little bit more to you, would you say? Well, I kind of, I kind of like this one right here, the one on the right. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, and, and, and with the color schemes and everything, I, I tried to mix them up enough where I could Mm -hmm. get an idea you know say if you know we were if I were if I could put this with another you know uh on another design so yeah I think um I think the illustrations are looking really good for me it's almost like gosh there's so many there's so many variants like variations that you can go with this that it can go on forever actually yeah. um as you can see, like just out of the five, but you could go so many different directions. Um, for me, it almost seems like the things that are that I'm getting sensed on, I, I call it like my spider sense, is that I'm kind of getting a sense that like the battery may need to come in a little bit closer. Um, so to kind of close the gap a little bit, to kind of connect it to like the heart. So part of me was wondering about that, um, just to kind of, create like this unit where it's kind of like one body of graphics, second body of graphics, third body, which is your type here, you know? Um, so part of me was thinking about that. And I, then uh, another part of me was wondering like, oh, I wonder if like, if uh, what it would look like if this whole section was red, um, because then it would be literally like 97%, the red would represent kind of like well, it could be low, 97% could represent low power, but, we, but then it would be more about power and not about love. So then we kind of lose the love aspect, unless there's a way to incorporate the heart back into the design in some way. Um, so there's there could be that component to it, but, but it's it's cool. I think for me, it's like three different things. And the three things is abstract enough that it gets me curious. Like, wait, heart, battery power, train. Like what's, what is, what is, you know, what is going on here, you know? Yeah, and, and the fact that like, it, it's just, you know, it kind of just plays to the cell phone. It's like something that seems so, so simple, you know, and, and, and like the design real simple. Yeah, but like, what's like going it, on is so yeah. suspenseful. It almost seems like it, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense if that makes, you know what I mean? Like, like I see it and I can kind of relate, but what is it? And I think the abstraction is the battery, like, okay, the battery 97 cell phone, maybe. And then heart, like, wait, like, is it love? Is it so, like, I don't get that. And then what is that? Is that a train? So just the fact that it's abstract to a level that it gets me want to like engage is, is good. So I kind of like that, the abstraction of it all. And I think if we put in that line somewhere like maybe underneath the battery where it's like a romantic comedy by, mm -hmm. that'll even throw people off. It's like, wait a minute. This is like, what is this? This is a comedy. This doesn't make any sense. That's that would be enough of a curiosity build up for me that where it's like, I think I can make this work, you know? Right. So I like this one. I think this might be the one. Um, and then from here, um, I would put it in that vertical template, which is like, um, it's built into the, the assignment post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then once that's set, then you're, you're ready to rock. So yeah. Um, I just liked your selection of everything. I mean, the it's like the organic heart followed by like this geometric battery. The font is is well selected because it's geometric. Then we have this pretty highly detailed render of like the dome and the train to contrast and this subtle line to contrast it all. So it's just it's just intriguing enough and and kind of out there for me and abstract, I would say, for me to go. I'm curious, and that's enough for me to kind of get my attention. So, and the color combos, um, 
they work good. So, yeah, man, I think you hit it pretty good. Thank you. Um, this, did, did, did this style resonate? Is this kind of like a, a like a style that you kind of gravitate towards, or did or is this project just kind of stand out to you? And well, yeah, I mean, yeah, like uh, when I design things, I I usually go with a more minimalistic approach to it. So you so know, this I, is right. Yeah, yeah, this is why I'm like, oh, okay, just you know, I can I can speak I can speak in this uh in this way. Perfect. Yeah, no, I think I think you got, definitely have a strength for it. Um, it's good. It's good. Um, did I get a chance to see your T-shirt too? By any chance? Oh, def- well, I I I can I show it to you right now. <laughs> yeah, let's take a peek at it. Um, okay. because I would say if you if minimalist is your style, go with that in your all your work, man. Let me see if I can find this real quick. Uh, there, forget, forgive me for a second there, Evelyn. That's okay. I just want to kind of sneak in a t-shirt design um, so that um, just to kind of give some, uh, some quick feedback. If it's available, if, if not, Jordan, you can email yeah, it. That, yeah, that's uh, it right here. Okay. So this is, it's good. It's right. So minimalist right up is, is your thing. So that is, that's your, that's your style. That's your thing. Um, it sounds like you lean into that on a, a, a regularly, which is, which is, I don't know if I'm right on that. Is that kind of like the style you lean into typically? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like this. I do like that. I like the, the simplicity, the basketball, the elements. Um, I think, um, at the I still end need of, to work on this. Oh, my bad. Oh no. Um, I think the colors that can be played with a little bit. Yeah. Um, whether it's, um, color guide the kind of like what we just saw with Francesca it, it can be very helpful um or you can kind of experiment with like very bright colors or like more vintage colors it could it could work in a couple of different directions if that helps um yeah. but this is strong and and then the live tra- uh, not the live trace the retrace that you drew with the pen tool is is good too so thank you right on okay yeah, color, I think the color guide will be will be the next step to find color arrangements. Okay. And, and then finding those colors and in, in whether it's like kind of contemporary colors, brights, you know, like modern today versus like vintage, either either or I think would work for it. Right. But I think once we get the color combinations played with and modified, then you're ready to upload that too. Okay. Okay, cool. Right on. Well Thank done, you. man. Exciting. Man, you guys are killing it on the designs it's all there's always something about the mickey t-shirt that kind of whips everybody into shape and then like everything after that is like good <laughs> so um uh, let's move on with evelyn um if you're ready you can share your file there and we'll and we'll get you set up um and then I'm, i think we're good on time so far so and then nitty i got your screenshot and i think we'll get some time to talk about your work maybe before the break but for sure after the break so um we'll set you up okay and um and then evelyn if you can hear us if if you if you're ready you can share your screen or um or if not we can wait till after the break i don't know if you're if you can hear us or you can type it in the chat if not we can just um maybe do a quick early break or we could talk about a sketch if, if somebody wants to throw in the sketch oh okay so Evelyn, are you, did you want to just kind of split screen it or, or you can drop it in the chat. You can do a screenshot, drop it in the chat and I can broadcast it out if we're having technical difficulties. Um, I can share my screen. Okay, perfect. Let me just... What? Girl, you've been busy. Gosh, I don't even remember seeing that as a as a sketch. What is going on here? I love it. First of all, I think it's very cool. Thank you. It, let 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 us know what do we got? What do we got here? Okay, so um, I was I have actually a few other ones. I have, this is the first one that I sort of thought I I didn't really think about the colors because for this one I was just kind of going strictly to figure out what the design would be, uh-huh. and then um later on i would sort of mess around with the colors because i don't really like these color combinations so 
Mm -hmm. um, for now, I was sort of thinking to uh, have the lowrider at the bottom with Japanese buildings in the background and sort of like a half sun that represents like the circle of the Japanese flag. Mm -hmm. But then again, I was thinking those aren't really colors gray and red. So that's why I'm saying, you know, I was messing around with the colors with other posters. And then of course, Chicano in Japanese. Yeah, I think um, it is very cool. I'll say that right now. Um, I think, have you tried black as instead of gray? I mean, I, I kind of like the gray just because it's so unexpected and gray is a shade of black. Black does work with uh, with like red, like black and red are popular co uh, co color contrast. Um, you know, black to red, black to white, red to black, like typically those colors are really like a, a range of combinations you would see typically, right? With the white border would even work really nice to kind of finalize some things. And then black, um, you, know, bla you know, black is just, just really intense typically and it kind of, you know, black and white is is typically found when it comes to like subcultures or urban uh, urban cultures here and there. At least around the '80s, it was. Um, so, just high contrast colors typically, right? High contrast means loud, and um, when it comes to like uh, subcultures, it they te they tend to be very loud, right? So whether it's you know um, you know Chicano culture or um, not Chicano and and let me just and let me just clarify too about that as well. Um, we were having a political discussion uh, about this at, in one semester, last semester I think it was, and someone made the made the point saying, "Professor, Chicano is Latino Mexican culture. If you really look at uh, spanning across centuries, uh, more modern, if anything, um, this stuff is gangster or what you would call cholo culture." And I was like you you might have a point because chicano is not the same as cholo chicano is mexican american born in america and so they identify as chicano related to their past their culture but also to what is now if that makes sense right it's like it's like hispanic it's like if you it, hispanic was thrown to mexicanos by the nixon administration and it was like it's like if you're central american south american puerto rican you're hispanic and and all of a sudden, like um, everyone from all the country said, we never okayed that. So it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a, um, it is a one word that was sort of given to everyone and no one was really happy with that. So for, for, uh, for Mexicanos, they said, well, we're Chicano because we're born in America, but we relate to, we, we're still Mexican, born in America, where we're Mexican American, but we really identify ourselves as Chicanos. So this film kind of went from Chicano, took Chicano and related it to like Cholo culture or gangster culture, one could say. And there's a little bit of a distortion there. So just to just to kind of make some clarification, um, yes, it's a product of a specific time, place, and culture. Um, when we when we kind of look at it from gangster lowriders and say that's it, that's 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 kind of narrows it down, right? So there's a little bit of a distortion there. I just want to be cl clear about that because I wanted to make that like a, a very clear statement. Um, and it can be a loaded term, like Ellie says, for sure, um, because we don't know what, it could be this, it could be that, we identify as this. Every generation has a different interpretation, right? Um, and so just, just to kind of clear the air a little bit. That doesn't change the fact that the design's great, Evelyn. I just kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a background on that, right? Um, either way, when it comes to the design, um, what you can do, kind of like what Jordan did, is that you can kind of do a copy and a paste and have like five across and try different color combos. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, black and white, uh, black instead of gray. Um, I would love to kind of see in a similar font like that, both Chicano in Japanese and Chicano in, in English and kind of overlapping, you know? almost kind of like off center a little bit so that they're kind of interacting in the same way that the low rider and the center interacting. That would be really cool to see it in both languages to kind of show the connection that one and one is related to the other. Okay. Um, worth exploring. And, and I do like the outline. Um, was that, 
was the was were, were both traced by pen tool or live trace or a combination of the two? It was all pen tool. So you pen tooled the everything out with the top and the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. Good job, good job. You're that is very very cool. Yeah, you did a great job. Um, yeah, I think it's like 95% there. I would love to see English Chicano with the Japanese, uh, maybe three or four different color combinations, right? Of your choice. And then of course we'll add the, um, the type, which will be um, that movie poster type, which will probably be up here at the bottom. And uh, we'll add that there too, okay? So then that way we can kind of see it. Um, and then we'll take a look at it hopefully for Tuesday um, for one last time, okay? But um, how do you feel about it overall? Um, I think, yeah, I, I knew the color. Well, actually I have another one. Yeah, let's take a peek. This one was mm. the same, just different color combinations. Again, I was sort of just messing around with the colors. And then for this one, I also changed the car. Mm, no, I think the other car is much stronger, for yeah. sure. So yeah, I was just gonna like do a bunch of color combinations and sort of change things around, see what works, see what I like, see what I don't. And so far, I, I, I do like this one, but of course I just, um, that was actually a really good idea with the Chicano and the Japanese Chicano. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, work with it. Um, um, gosh, I feel like you're definitely taking a jump with, uh, with this project. Like I'm kind of picking up a style, you know? And, uh, and I don't know if it, I would have to see more, more examples eventually, but whatever you're kind of onto, I'm kind of digging it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like detail, but not detailed. And it's in, in, a, in a sense, almost like it's textured in a way, but not really. It's like detail, but textury. Um, but I think you're making good choices and you're kind of leaving a little bit to the imagination, which is good. There's a level of abstraction, which is good. Um, it's kind of surreal in a sense. Um, like I don't see the whole car, right? So it's kind of like, that's abstract. That's somewhat surreal. That's interesting and engaging to a viewer okay um i think the first one you showed is interesting because i do like that border that kind of ties everything together and and sort of encompasses it um but play with colors let's see let's see different color combinations you know um this could this could potentially work it could work at, if there's some really like very high contrast interesting color combinations very sort of bold, unusual color combos happening for something like this without a framing device. Um, but let's try it all. Let's see it all and let's see what we can go with, okay? Um, you, you can use your color guide or you can even go online and look for color combinations that look interesting to you from websites, um, albums, posters, photos, whatever looks interesting and we can pull those colors and kind of match them together, okay? okay. Yeah, and I agree with Francesca. Yeah, the first one that we saw does look rather finished. Um, but and let's let's explore those colors um, there too, okay? And the detailing, yes, in the buildings is awesome. So, uh, good job. Um, can we zoom in on that building by any chance, Evelyn, really quick before we hit break? Uh, does it matter which one? Uh, no, no, it could be this one. Good job. It makes a big difference. Yeah, this building in the center looks good. You did a, you, you did a good job uh, tracing it out. Very clean. Yeah, that um, the tower, those two towers in the center are, are very good. They're on point. So you, you, you're doing you're doing a great job. I really like it a lot. For sure. Okay. Okay, yeah, well, let's make those changes and then we'll follow up for Tuesday, okay? okay? All right. Guys, you're doing a great job, guys. I'm I'm inspired. That's awesome. So, well done. Um let's do this. Let's take a let's take a quick break. Let's go um let's take a quick 5 minute and um and then we will 
while we're doing that, I'm going to pull, uh, Ellie, I'll pull you into the, uh, into the one-on-one -on -one really quick on break and we'll talk. Okay. And then, um, and then Nitty will, we'll talk, um, right after the break, but we'll go, will you let me know, Nitty, if you want me to go public or private on your comments? Um, if I, if you want me to share with the class or not, you can send me a direct message there. Okay, cool. All right, guys, let's, um, okay, perfect. Um, I'll, maybe we can go a little bit public to, so we can share with the class after the break. Okay. All right, guys, let's take a quick break. Um, and then, um, Ellie, I'll pull you into the private room really quick and we will continue in about five. So let's, let me go ahead and pause. Okay. Okay, so we're back, and I think um, we're gonna take a look at Nitty's design, and then after that, um, e hopefully, Yvonne, you if you have a sketch too, you want to share, you can share it with us, um, or you can email it over, and we can go into the private room, uh, and uh, we can look at it in the in the breakout room. But um, let me take a look here. Ooh. Um, let me take a look. Uh, Nitty, I, I thought I downloaded your file, um, but it, I think I may have not loaded it. Can you reload it again, Nitty? I'm sorry. Um, when I went to the breakout room, it looks like it didn't shoot it over. Or if it's in the email, I can even pull it up on email too. Oh, email itself. Okay, let me let me go ahead and open that up. Okay, and then I got yours here too, Yvonne. So um, let me see if I can open these up really quick. Um, okay, open it up in Canvas. Okay. Uh, rough design. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to... Double click to open that. Cool. Okay, let me go ahead and um, share my screen. And let's take a look. Okay. So, first things first, um, looking very cool. And um, I like where you're going with it. So, Definitely, um, let's let's break it down really quick. Um, so I got the one design, you put it in there. It's looking good and the fact that it's minimalist, so cool. Um, so that's moving really well. I think the, was this live trace or pen, or did you pen tool uh, by hand the, the plane, just out of curiosity? Live trace, okay. So I would, and it looks like you went in with the curvature tool and maybe cleaned up a couple of points here and there um hopefully okay so i would pro the live trace is doing a pretty good job i would say for some sections it may need to be cleaned up a little bit using direct selection which is the white arrow um and they're and they're minor oh okay rough design no worries in terms of design i think it's great i'll say that right now um clear focal point you have type and i do like the fact that you have kind of like this um sort of like this sort of trail from the plane as if it flew from the R. So that's working pretty good for me. Um, I think, and the font selection is very good. I, I like the fact that you picked like this really sort of flowy font that, that kind of um, is gliding and sort of swerving almost as if it was the plane itself to sit. And I think that's how you related it back to the swerve or the trace of the, of the line going to the back of the plane. So I like that aspect of it. It's really fun. I would say to kind of connect it back a little bit to the film, just for, um, just to kind of relate it. There is a, that one star, which is sort of like a diamond shaped star. We could for fun, throw that star somewhere in, um, in, in sort of like this upper quadrant or section. Um, it could be, um, literally, um, here for this star, but just enlarged, right? And imagine if that was like, you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit taller, um, floating there as it were, if that makes sense. Right. I think that might make the design, um, um, really, really fun because then it connects it back to the film. Um, you could literally like screenshot the, 
the the star from the movie and then kind of trace it so you can put it in there that way it kind of looks like it's you know somewhat heading towards it so we can do that um, with that particular star and then um, and then we could even copy and paste and add more star uh, slightly more stars maybe 10 percent more stars in the sky just for effect so you could technically like um I'm trying to find the right arrangement uh you could kind of copy and paste like this arrangement and then you can sort of um paste them rotate them in like you know this little area behind the star around the star uh it's almost kind of like you're taking a pattern and you're kind of putting a uh a brush of it in different areas, if that makes sense. So, you know, you can copy and paste that arrangement like around the star there. So it's like towards the back. So it gives it a little bit of a texture. You know, we might be able to like add it here um, or maybe a little bit behind the plane there just to kind of give that sky a little bit more of like a, uh, I kind of imagine it to like sprinkles or sparkles, you know, those glitters, right? Like if I grab a bunch of glitter and I just threw it on top of a, bl a black piece of paper, they're kind of randomly sporadic. I kind of, yeah, the cosmic look kind of glittery in a way. Um, I think that will help it, you know, uh, give it a little bit of like a, a cosmic look, but also kind of a textured look and a pattern. Um, and that'll contrast nicely with like the, the bottom section, which is this, very structured um, type and the very unique little line, which looks like an arrangement, like almost like a little star pattern flowing behind it, as it were. Um, you know, so that pattern on top to contrast that bottom, clean, clear, sort of single line on the bottom will be really interesting visually. Um, so I like that aspect of it. Um, with regards to the plane, yeah, I would say let's clean up the plane. Um, and by cleaning up, I mean more, more like, you know, uh, maybe some parts are straight lines here. Other parts are a little bit more curved there to kind of give it more of a rounder tire feel. Um, I think just, we just need a, a few more straight lines here and there. Um, you know, like this little top section looks a little bit janky. So we just kind of want to make sure that the lines are looking a little bit more um, pronounced and that certain curved lines are kind of moving. I kind of like to think of it as like, imagine like if this line was curving and progressing, it would look like this smooth curve going across the bottom there, right? And this part looks very clean, right? So I kind of think about that. I kind of think about like the overall um, look and feel. You, you could try with the pen tool if you feel like you, you got, if you have more control, for sure. I think in terms of just composition, um, it works, it works well. So I like, I like that aspect of it. And then, um, and of course it's a trace of the plane from the film. So it still connects back to the film. So that's great too. Um, once we add the type, like the, the movie credits, you can literally just copy and paste that in like, like a, a lighter shade of blue or, or, um, or sort of like a faded light blue that doesn't stand out too much. You could put it in white if you want to, or it could be like that same color blue that you have for the background, maybe a little lighter, like five or 10% lighter, so it doesn't kind of fight with the text, but it could be placed down on the bottom, okay? Um, but besides that, I think you're doing great. So um, definitely a, a nice jump and good recovery. And you did good on the last design of the T-shirt. It's just this one, I think the examples from, from the videos and what we saw and from the class definitely helped. So um, well done. And we'll take a look at it, and and chances are I'll definitely be pushing the due date for next um, next Tuesday. So I'm gonna give everybody an extra days just so they, they fine tune it, um, and uh, and then we're ready to rock and roll. So um, yeah, this is great. You guys are you guys are doing it very very well. So good recovery, guys. This is looking great, guys. Honestly. Um, Let's take a look, Yvonne, I know I got an email from you. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get a little bit of, actually, um, Yvonne, if you could resend it again, for some reason, it did not attach the sketches. So if, if you can re-email it or, um, or, or screenshot it and drop it in the chat, that's great. Um, but for some reason, the email didn't attach the sketches. 
and I don't see it attached here in the in my inbox. Okay, so just wanted to just let you know on that one. Okay, um, yeah, I don't see the attachment in the email. So if you could resend it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and then Elizabeth, I know you joined us. Do we have some updates on the poster on your side? Do we have enough time to see a digital for you? Uh, there, and if you, I mean, um, you can type it in, still working on it. Okay, so then um, we'll, we'll try to wait till the end of class to see if you got something, um, or you can email it over to me and I'll shoot an email back um, between now and Tuesday. Um, and I can send a video comment for that because I know what you're doing and what you're building. So that the concepts approved, I just want to see where you're at eventually. So if we don't get a chance to get it done tonight or have something shown tonight, you can email it over to me tonight or tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay. Okay. So I think we're good, guys. Um, practical next steps. Um, Actually, let's see, Dre, do we have anything out there you want to share also? Um, or are you still working on your designs as well? Um, I guess I could share real quick, add a little something. Okay, let's take a look at yours. And, um, and then we'll, I have a feeling that everyone's got some feedback and we'll let everyone work on it tonight in class or, or independently at home. So I feel like we might uh, finish a little bit early. Loading it up right now. Okay. And, but you guys are doing amazing. It's looking great. Um, conceptually, it's looking good. The designs are looking good. I feel like you guys have like this new like breath of like air um, with the work and um, it's looking great. All right, this is what I got. Right on, man. Okay, so how 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 far do you think it's like complete like how like do you think it's 80 percent 90 percent done 90 like what what do you where, how would say, you gauge it so far i want to say it looks a little empty um but i got most of what i really want on the poster maybe i'd say around 70 percent done but uh maybe you can give me some ideas or what, what do you think of mm -hmm. it um i like it um i think a couple things that do stand out just to kind of help the design. Um, let me kind of break this down. So the, let me annotate here. So the, um, the type, um, I think I have a, that, I have that type available in, um, in canvas, the, uh, the, the movie poster copy is there. Um, and I can copy and paste it for you, but you can literally open the file, copy and paste and put it there on the bottom. Oh, that's, that's um, all good. And you could do that. Yeah, that's totally fine. Oh. So you, that um, that kind of gives it that sort of texture and size that kind of makes it have that movie poster look and feel. So I like, you can use that. Okay. That's the first one. No one really oh, reads it. I had to, yeah, yeah. And I, I thought but, I would change um, it. Maybe. Some classes do. I'm more concerned for the graphic per se. Oh, great. All so right. um, so you can do that and that'll kind of get it to where it needs to be, um, mm -hmm. which is one step closer. Um, I really like how you uh, use the type here. So let me go ahead and kind of pull that. So um, that's working really good. And I do like the contrasting like sizes there, like right by Ben Brandt. I just kind of dig that asymmetrical um, play on the type. Yeah. So um, I would definitely keep that um, just for fun because it just kind of shows a little bit of like typographic control um happening there i think it'll look really clean once that type is here on the bottom replaced mm -hmm. so those two sections will look pretty good um from the get-go mm -hmm. um the the graphic is looking pretty good um so i like how that train is going and I, even the tracks are moving pretty well too so those two elements are looking pretty good the the things that are kind of standing out to me and I think I got your thing, Yvonne. So I'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, is the type. I think the type here and there in red might be a bit much um, and may need to be played with. But the question is, how can we make it work? So there's two things I can think about. One is we don't have the 97 in the circle. Um, 
and it just kind of stays like this circle with a train okay. and it just stays like that right like we just have like and the 97 moves to a different location altogether um because it feels like it's being kind of forced a little bit and i can see what you're trying to do you're trying to make it look kind of angled and, and kind of play with the type a little bit and and we could technically do that and there might be a, there could be a couple of options on how we can put it into perspective um so there's that aspect of it but even so even if we did that it almost makes sense to see the 97 and the percent happen inside the entire circle yeah. in and of itself right so it kind of i know you're trying to integrate which is great i feel like it might it might not necessarily have to be inside um altogether what i think could potentially work is we can use the typography uh as a way to show the film so kind of like um, we can fill this section here with 97%. Like, can, like if like the Ben Brand font, um, I could totally imagine like a super tall, like nine, um, like a really big narrow vertical nine happening there, real vertical seven, and maybe like a little percent happening in there, so to speak, right? That'd be cool, yeah. And then you can kind of play with the type that way. And what you're doing is kind of doing what they did back in the um, in the Blue Note movie poster era, uh, or actually jazz cover era, Blue Note covers, where they kind of like structured type in a way that was kind of like asymmetrical, but lined up with other letters, if that makes sense. So um, I think if we kind of place the 97 in there, it would look really interesting graphically. And then it would lead us to this really cool graphic below it. And then you would have a pretty cool abstract minimalist sort of piece that would definitely work for the portfolio. Um, that's, how, that's how I'm looking at it a little bit um, yeah, overall. I see where you're coming from. I, I'm pretty glad because I, you know, I thought maybe this would look kind of good. I toyed a lot with this kind of like the envelope distort um feature and really try to make the nine look good but um you know maybe there there is something better and i really like your idea here with uh, moving all this type and just kind of leaving it as is right here yeah and, and what you're really doing when you think about it is that the, what the type is we look at things from left to right so typically we we will say romantic comedy ben brand and then kind of lead down to like 97 mm percent -hmm. which leads to like the graphics so my eyes kind of going like left uh, left, right, down, and it's kind of leading me to the graphic, as it were. Um, so, so I think that will kind of make it work there overall. Mm -hmm. And then I think um, the other thing that could happen, and that's more of a kind of like a fine tune, is that we can kind of take um, this little curvature here. We and I think we might need to play a little bit with some of the textured ends there just to kind of give it a little bit more of a feel. I don't mind it so much, but something about the bottom part of that train, oh, you don't like really over know. here, it's like really close to the edge, you know what I mean? And then like right about the center, mm -hmm. it kind of loses a little bit or has a little bit more. So I think that those curves just need to be uh, equal, you know, whatever the distance from the edge to the train should be equal across. If I'm being nitpicky, that's a good thing. That means like it's overall moving in the right direction and it's looking really good, you know? Um, so there's that aspect to it. Yeah, man, I think once we make those adjustments and yeah. maybe clean up some of the uh, edges here of these pieces, just to, mm -hmm. so that they're a little bit more straight line and whatnot sure. and, and consistent, then, um, and of course, adding that type here on the bottom, I think you'll mm -hmm. be ready to uh, move forward and rock and roll. So oh, great. Right. Um, yeah, um, it looks like once we do that next round and, and have it ready for, tuesday then it'll look fairly complete and i think you'll be set great sounds so, good man thanks for the feedback yeah not a problem this is looking great guys i am uh i am really pleased with how everything's looking overall so well done um let's see um yvonne really quick hopefully the attachments came through so we'll take a look at it and then give you some feedback okay yeah the picture did come in Gonna try to download it, open it up here, and then we'll um, give you some feedback there. And then um, hopefully, Yvonne, you, uh, if you have a favorite, um, I think I think left to right, uh, top row, bottom row, left to right, 
Um, we'll use that as a as a as a indicator there, and then we'll take a look at it that way. Okay. So it looks like you're working on the. Um, oh, we have two different movie poster concepts. Um, let's start off with the first one. Do you have a favorite, Yvonne? Like, um, like is it the top row, left to right? left starting with number one, four starting to the right, right there. Is there like a favorite that you have? Um, uh, yeah, I, I like the the second one in the first row for the 97%. So uh, this one, oh, let me see really quick. Did it highlight? No, it probably didn't. Um, let me kind of pull up my annotate. So uh, would it be this one right here? Second one, top row, you said? Yes. Okay. So, and it looks like it's the figure and and standing with back to the audience. Okay, standing with back to the audience and and it looks like the train track or he's like at the platform and the trains are going by is what it looks like? Yes. Okay. Um, and let me just kind of get a visual for the other ones really quick. Sure. Yeah, I would agree. Um, that one de would definitely work um, in terms of minimalist, just because to see somebody standing somewhere kind of like for me, it kind of represents, I'm thinking symbolically, right? Like um, anytime anyone's like looking out towards the distance or you see somebody's back and that typically when I see somebody's back looking towards something, it indicates that they're like looking at something, reaching out for something, gazing at something, which typically means like they're going to about, they're about to begin looking for something or searching or on a journey, if that makes sense. So um, that figure in the horizon um, kind of is kind of like a wild west reference where it's like, okay, riding off into the sunset kind of thing. Right. Um, you see that a lot in films and, and, and movie posters and, and uh, as an indicator. So we can kind of work that angle um, with the design. And I and in terms of this minimalist, I could totally see this work as a um, like um, as basically kind of like a single line, kind of like what we saw a little bit here. I don't know if, if you plan to do it, but we could have like the background be one color and then um and then maybe there could be uh like a completely different color for the background as it were and um you know and that and that could be a factor um in and of itself and probably not gonna work for mine but let me see you know so we could have like a horizon line we could have like a solid color happening there and then you have like this live trace silhouette of the figure of somebody that's standing possibly holding a phone and it could be sort of an outline of that. And then we see it's kind of like what Francesca did a little bit, which is like the outline of a train or a silhouette of a train with windows um, as well. And that could be, um, that could be, um, you know, these graphic images over here. So like a live, you know, live trace or, or pen tool of that happening. Um, that being said, right, then that's your focal point. That's the image. The second thing we, that stands out typically after the graphic is the name of the film. So we always see the picture really big and then of the image, and then we always find the font to be the second largest thing in a movie poster. Because we wanna see image and, and name of movie fairly quickly. So the 97% could technically um, uh, move around. We could technically put 97%, um, it could be probably really big somewhere here, although white doesn't really help it see the color it could be like centered big it could be asymmetrical off the center there with like a film by the here right um we could even kind of play around with it in the center here um as well of course we have to have our movie credits but it can be even uh centered here if we can get the character maybe centered and then we could probably put the film or the uh, title underneath him and he's in the center and it could be like image figure 97% romantic comedy and he's kind of like searching, right? So it could, it could even be symmetrical, so to speak. Um, it all really depends on how it's rendered. I mean, I could see it, I could see the type being symmetrical. 
I can see we can have type there. I can see the move, the name of the movie being asymmetrical to kind of balance the train on the right. So I would say go with what uh, looks uh, visually pleasing, what looks good. Um, and then for Tuesday, we'll take a look at it um, there. But you, you saw some good examples tonight from the rest of the class on how you can interpret the graphic. So let that guide you. And um, and it's a light, it could be a live trace or you could pen tool it out, but it would be like a silhouette. So I would look for like um, um, man silhouette or male silhouette um, and see what pulls up. And that typically will be like an outline of a figure, one color, and we can pen tool it or live trace it easily that way. Okay. So let's take a look at it. And then um, if you have something and you want to shoot it also between now and next Tuesday, you can. Um, and I, I'll email you back and then give you some commentary early on before Tuesday. That could, that, that could also give you some support there as well. Okay. Yes. All right. It's looking good. So I'm digging it. So, but you had a lot of good references tonight from the rest of the class. Okay, cool. All right, guys. So I'm at 837. Um, here's what we'll do. I'm going to jump over to packaging design and work with them. Feel free to, um, you could stay online and zoom here and work on your designs. Um, Elizabeth, if you got something tonight, um, you can send me a quick message and say that you want to show it or you can email it or you can, or, or between now and Tuesday, but I'll come back in, in in an hour and then we'll see where everybody's at overall. If you got feedback guys and, and you think you got what you need tonight and you want to log off and work on it at home independently, go for it. We, that should, we, we got everyone in on feedback. You're more than welcome to log off and work at home independently and have some things ready for Tuesday. Okay. So stick around or you can log off, whatever you feel comfortable with, but I will be here um, until the end of class in case there's questions, issues, or concerns, okay? All right. All right, guys. If I don't get to see you tonight, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you Tuesday. And for anyone that's sticking around, um, then I'll be back in a few minutes um, right before session so we can just kind of do final comments and final shares of anything that you might need, okay? All right, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Take care.